Good old. I hope you're all safe and sound. Again, I appreciate you all for following my channel on YouTube and on Facebook. In due course of time, I will also be uploading all these lectures on LinkedIn as well. So far, we have been talking about uh, from the hydrodynamics point of view, we have explained all the basics. The last lecture was regarding the birthing with the use of an anchor. Today I will be taking an important subject of STS. This I am sharing with you as a being a past mooring master where I have done loads of uh, stints of doing the STS, tandem mooring and SP moorings. So we will go step by step let's see how much time we have because as as i said earlier that if the video is long enough then it becomes a problem for me to upload the same so there are two ways where the sts is normally carried out one is the mother vessel is underway and the daughter vessel comes alongside and the second is the mother vessel is at anchorage and the daughter vessel comes alongside furthermore you must have seen uh, especially when I talk about the SPM moorings, that most of the times or nearly all the times, a right hand screw vessel, when she's getting moved to an SPM, the hose connection always takes place on the port side. This is the kind of little question I've asked you. When we come to the SPM moorings, we will talk about it, but a food for thought for you all guys. See if you can find out any reason, which is normally a basic reason, and there are loads of, loads of other entry cases involved in that. So not to waste uh, too much time now on the thing what we have discussed. I'll straight away hit the nail at the right spot as far as the STS is concerned. On the board, I've written, I've drawn two separate, in two separate sections. This is the STS when the vessels are underway, the mother vessel as well as the daughter vessel both are underway. The second one is for the vessel, the mother vessel is at anchorage and the daughter, daughter vessel comes alongside. Now considering the case number one, where the mother vessel, let's take this maybe a VLCC, and the daughter vessel is approaching on her starboard side. Now under those circumstances, as I explained earlier, do not forget the mantra which I taught you in my first and subsequently the second lecture. The underwater volume of displacement plays a major role. Whenever the ship's maneuverability or its navigation or proceeding through the water, cutting through the water is concerned, the underwater volume of displacement plays a major role. Same thing has been depicted here. In this case, the mother vessel is proceeding. Now remember, there, here, the important point is that the speed of transit shall be approximately, approximately between three to five knots between both the ships. Of course, the daughter vessel has to speed up or she has to speed up to come close to the mother vessel before she starts changing her reps. Even in the STS checklist, there's a column where it says the speed of the speed whether vessel can maintain a speed of four to five knots that is based on this particular reason what we are going to see now i'm not going to hear uh, talk uh, here about the sts checklist which are se uh, self-explanatory but in case somebody has any doubt he can always ask me so in this case the mother vessel is proceeding on a let's say northerly course with a speed of say approximate five knots the daughter vessel is coming up an angle. This is the angle I've drawn this line and this is the initial approach angle towards the mother vessel and the final approach angle towards the mother vessel. The theta which I've drawn here is approximately the difference between the initial and final approach will be around 30 degrees theta angle, the angle of approach. Other thing, the point to ponder is that during the when the, when the STS is going to take place, when both the vessels are moving or both the vessels are underway, this area of 0.5 nautical miles, what I've drawn, this area shall not be approached by the daughter vessel. 
The reasons being, when you come closer to a daughter vessel, let's say a stern of her, you have negative for positive forces as I explained in my first and second lecture subsequently. You will get attracted and drawn towards her. One is the positive negative forces because on the stern of the mother vessel it will be negative forces and on the bow of the daughter vessel it will be the positive forces and they will get attract, attracted towards each other and that may lead towards a collision. The second factor which is of course we cannot undermine it is the underwater volume of displacement. The underwater vo of volume of the displacement of a VLCC is much larger than as compared to a mid-sized tanker which is over here. So because of the vacuum which is created because of the underwater volume of displacement, the mid-size or the smaller tanker will automatically get attracted or collide with the bigger vessel. Hence, this approach sector, 0 0.5, knot, uh, 0 0.5 nautical miles from the stern of the ship shall not be persevered or shall not be approached upon. The angle of approach should be approximately, when I talk about from the mother vessel and the daughter vessel, it should be approximately above the beam. Say, let's say about 10 degrees above the beam of the mother vessel. If the mother vessel is proceeding like this, the initial angle of approach should be approximately 10 degrees above the beam. That is what I have depicted over here in this line. So, the daughter vessel is approaching here with this line where I have shown here in the dotted line. This vessel is approaching towards the mother vessel and initial angle of approach because when she is going this way, she is also making a head reach, coming closer to the mother vessel. So, this should be approximately 10 to 15 degrees above the beam. Once she comes closer to it, then she starts altering the course and the final angle of approach, let's say this is a, this, the, the theta between this line and this line is about 30 degrees. So, initial angle of approach, let's say if I say 0, 0, 0 degrees, so it should be around 110 degrees. If the vessel is heading 0, 0, 0 north, this angle of approach should be approximately 115, maximum 120 degrees from the, that is if this is northerly heading and she's, uh, the mother vessel is approaching at 0, 0, 0 north, the daughter vessel should come approximately from an angle of 120 degrees following the mother vessel. Once she has come closer to that, once she is approximately 0 0.1 nautical miles, that's what I have written here. In other words, one cable of this, of the initial approach, that is approximately 120 degrees or 115 degrees, she is coming here and once she is around about one cable from here, that's when she starts converging or starts coming closer to the mother vessel, altering her course nice and easy to starboard, maintaining an angle of approximately between these two ships, an angle of approximately 5 or degrees, 3 to 5 degrees. At the same time, we should not forget what I mark here. The roll and surge may be there, subject to the weather condition, of course. STS, when it is to be, uh, to be, uh, uh, is to take place, Weather constraints have to be always checked. If the weather reports say the weather is going to be rough, then of course it has to be aborted. Maximum up to the force of 3 when you are coming alongside is permissible. 4 you are going on the borderline, 5 of course is not very good. So up to the wind force, go for 3 is a good time that you can approach the mother tanker to conclude the STS. So this vessel after she is approached around close to two points above the beam of the mother tanker, she alters her course to starboard till such time she makes a final approach where this angle theta is around three to five degrees till such time she straightens herself. But at the same time, now and this during this time period, as you can see, she is well within one cable. So we have to also see how the vessel is behaving, the sur like surge is there. At that point of time, the mooring master who is on this ship will keep on asking the heading of this ship. At this point of time, the heading of this mother vessel shall be steady. She should keep her heading, heading steady within 3 to 5 degrees. Let's say 0, 0, 0 degrees is the original course. She can go maximum up to 0, 0, 0 3 to 3, 5, 7. That's the, that's the yaw allowed till such time the vessels are coming closer to each other. The important factor is as the vessel comes closer to 
the, the daughter vessel comes closer to the mother vessel, the angle of roll to be checked, the surge to be checked, and same time a close coordination of this vessel's course speed to be monitored at all times. That's the reason I've said, written here. Even during the approach, at this point of time, or maybe a little before this, the longitudinal speed cutting through the water and the speed over ground. The lateral speed. Lateral speed because this vessel will experience quite a handsome amount of lateral speed because of the underwater volume of the displacement created by this big tanker. As I said earlier, because big tanker, the underwater volume of displacement is larger. So there's a big void to be filled up by the water. So when the small tanker is coming closer to her, she will automatically be having a lateral speed getting drawn towards the mother vessel, which will happen automatically, which in a way does facilitate to bring the ships closer, but not so close enough to be dangerously close enough to collide. Of course, that's what we do not want. So, coming to this figure again, going this way, this is she's going 0, 0, 0 knot. This vessel is coming here around 3 to 5 degrees. The underwater volume of displacement of the bigger vessel is playing a major part because of the suction or the vacuum is created. This vessel will have sort of a lateral uh, speed or a lateral shift from her this position because she is also maintaining maybe around 5 or 6 knots at initially when she is approaching. Now at this point of time because of the lateral forces which are playing a major role because of the underwater volume of displacement this ship is getting straightened up and getting attracted towards some other vessel. At this point of time once the speed is maintained 3 to 5 knots and holding the head at the same time the daughter vessel will start giving slow short and slow kicks short kicks to basically maintain her heading and coming closer to this let's say if she is about the normal thumb rule is this vessel let's say she has got a beam of uh, let's say about 30 meters so twice the beam of this daughter vessel once she comes, let's say 60 meters close to her, close to the ship, the speeds to be adjusted in in uh, coordination with both the vessels. Of course, the mooring master uh, gives the gives the order of what speed to be uh, maintained. At this point of time, the stern kick, the transverse thrust to be used to swing the bow. This is on the right hand screw, as I said, as I said earlier. The transverse thrust to be used to straighten the daughter vessel to bring up parallel to the mother vessel. Once they are parallel to the mother vessel, now the, this particular condition I am taking when there are no tugs because most of the maneuvers what I have done, uh, proceeding underway and coming alongside, sometimes you don't get the tug. So this is the difficult condition what I am trying to explain. If you have tug and if it can be maneuvered, that is the easiest way you can do it. But yes, without tug, one thing is there, the weather has to be absolutely fine light air winds force maximum two to three in Beaufort is acceptable beyond that to approach without a tug is not advisable so <clears throat> when this vessel comes close up to twice the beam of this ship let's say the beam of this ship is 30 meters and uh, making 60 meters approximately here she should start using her stern kick for the transverse thrust to align her to be parallel once she is parallel then she can start proceeding at similar speed of three to five knots to maintain the safe distance between the ships at the same time come closer now first thing what the daughter vessel will be passing at that point of time will be the head ropes and the stern ropes of course keeping the propeller clear when I say stern ropes once the head and stern ropes are, are, are given to the mother vessel and the slack is picked up gradually nice and easy as the vessels are coming closer of course there is a fender here at the mother vessel which is going to maintain a distance between both the ships once this ship comes closer to the mother vessel 
the speeds are reduced as they become parallel or adjusted as required. At that point of time, one thing is to be assured that she is not heading into the wind. Even with force 3, when you are coming alongside, it is advisable to try to beam the wind because when you beam the wind, the vessel drifts automatically lateral. So, the fenders are here, the wind, not strong wind is required when they are approaching because this is what I have shown here, this V, V factor, which I will talk about it later. So, in this case, they have approached, they have come alongside to straighten the daughter vessel. The daughter vessel uses her transverse thrust. At the same time, the lateral uh, speed is also there because of the underwater volume of displacement by virtue of which the smaller vessel is getting attracted towards the bigger vessel. So, once they come alongside, nice and easy, close to the fender, before they come close to the fender, the head ropes are given by the daughter vessel and the stern rope. Once that is given and the speeds are adjusted, they are almost parallel, they are just hove up, hoved on to the head ropes and the stern rope of the daughter vessel. Once that is given, then you give the other double up because initially you give two ropes forward, two ropes up. The normal tie up in this situation would be 4 plus 2 from the daughter vessel. Now, when the vessels are making STS underway, as per the STS guideline, as per OCMF guideline, there has to be a load cell which is to be placed on each and every rope. That is, before the, uh, the ropes part, the load cell gives an indication, which is a normal modus operandi during the STS underway. So, both the vessels have come alongside. A normal path would be subject to the weather. Would be 4 plus 2 given by these the daughter vessel. And once that is done, the mother vessel gives two preventers. That is, one is two from forward and two from up, which I have shown here also. The preventer, the preventer ropes, two preventer ropes from forward and up. In other words, to keep the ship, to keep the daughter vessel tied up towards her. Most, most often these ropes subject to the mooring config configuration of the daughter vessel are breast ropes. So the daughter vessel has given four headlines, four stern lines followed by the springs. This normal sequence is four headlines are given, four stern lines are given. Once that is given, first the spring is given by the daughter vessel uh, single, one spring from the arc, one spring from forward to align the manifold. Once that is aligned, that's when, once the manifolds are aligned, one single spring is taught, that is from the daughter vessel, one from the bow, one from the stern, one from the forward, one from the arc. Each single spring line is taught, that's when the mother vessel gives the preventer, two preventers from the bow and two preventers from stern to keep her holding her alongside. After that, a second spring is given to ensure that the manifolds are aligned and they are properly brought together. Now, <clears throat> coming to the other part of maneuvering or coming uh, for the STS is that the mother vessel is at anchorage and the daughter vessel is approaching. Now, in first case, as we said, that the uh, during the STS underway, the daughter vessel shall pro uh, proceed at an angle approximately two points above the beam. Let's say this is 000, repeating myself, and this is about 110, 115, or 120, whatever is applicable, as it could be convenient, but not beyond that. So she's approaching here. But the difference in case of an anchored vessel, when the Daughter vessel is approaching, she can approach from stern here. And if she has got the tugs, in case of a <coughs> anchored vessel, the tug, one tug is to be, to be made fast on the starboard side, starboard bow, second to be made fast at stern so that she can pull on. And this is much easier maneuver, much easier way to come alongside during the STS. The only thing which is to be followed that you come nice and easy from stern of the ship and straighten yourself up 
reduce the speed. Now here the tug importance is more because this person is stopped. She's using a port anchor. She should not be using a starboard anchor because the daughter vessel is coming on the starboard side. So the port anchor is down. She's stationary. And <clears throat> once she comes here, the daughter vessel comes here, she is basically proceeding at a speed of approximately two to three knots. <clears throat> once she comes close to almost midship, that means the bow of the daughter vessel comes close to the midship of the mother vessel. That's when the engines to be stopped unless of course if it is required give a stern thrust or if required give, uh, give a stern thrust to straighten her up. Nevertheless the tug which is here can pull her bow out that is when she is approximately midship of her and maintaining minimum twice the distance of the beam. Let's say what I said here. Let's say the beam of this ship is 30 meters, approximately 60 meters off. That's when she should start working with a stern, that is a stern thrust to straighten herself. And the re remaining job will be done by the tugs to push her alongside. And other thing which I probably will explain you here. Now see the thing is that coming alongside we have just talked about. Uh, be it a vessel underway or be it a vessel at anchor. The mother vessel is at anchor. Normally what we see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 fenders and there is one fender which is also placed at the accommodation. Which is also placed at the accommodation. That is for casting off. So I think the lecture has already gone around 20 odd minutes something, maybe more in order not to have any problem for uploading. I think I will stop here because the next lecture I will take in continuation from here for disconnecting these two ships. Remember when we are going to talk about the disconnection of this, these two ships, it's a different fiasco altogether because during lightweight when bigger vessel which is let's say fully laden to her draft marks let's say VLCC and an Aframax comes alongside her the vessel which is light ring is going up and the vessel the daughter vessel is going down at that point of time I'll make it short and sweet then I'll explain it in the next lecture the underwater volume of the displacement of both the ships intersect which is what I've shown here you see the dotted line with the drawn with the green marker. The underwater volume of the displacement between these two ships form another ship shape thing like this. And that's what intersects and that's what makes them attached to it to both the vessels like a magnet. Now to have, how to get rid of it that we'll talk about in the next lecture. Thank you very much. Please do like subscribe my channel as i said earlier i will also be uploading these lectures on linkedin thank you good day and be stay safe thank you